Hello guys, so we are going to discuss today uh, decision making and our important topic is uh, make or buy decision. So it is also called uh, insourcing versus outsourcing. So what does mean by make decision? Make mean to say like when, for example, if you have a production facility and if you will produce the product in house, so that is called insourcing. And what is outsourcing? Outsourcing means say like when you are uh, buying the ready-made product from outside the market. That is called uh, that is called what? Uh, outside from the market. That is called outsourcing. So idea is very simple. Should we make the product in house, or should we buy the ready-made product from outside? So uh, how you will take the decision? So you have to consider the cost under make option cost under make option make means say under in sourcing and you also need to consider the cost under purchase option purchase option mean to say if you will buy the product from uh, outside okay like from the market so you have to compare the cost and obviously if the cost to make the product is less than and the cost of purchase then in that scenario we should make the product okay and if our cost to make our cost to produce the product is greater than cost of purchase then obviously we should purchase the product from outside so this is what is written here point number one is what if the total relevant cost of production are less than the cost to buy the item like simply here if the production costs are less than cost to buy the item the production should be made in house then you should make the product in another scenario if your total relevant cost of production are more than cost to buy the item like where the production cost are greater than production cost are greater than uh, the cost of purchase in that scenario the product should be purchased uh, uh, it means outsourced so guys this is really important so you are please remember also we also consider relevant cost obviously in make or buy decision so which cost uh, will be the relevant cost here so please remember the relevant cost of making a component relevant cost of making a component like if you are producing the product in house so whatever the manufacturing cost you will incur so those costs will become relevant if if all those costs are avoidable cost so avoidable mean to say what like if you will make the product so those costs will arise or you will incur those costs. And if you will buy the product from outside, maybe those costs can be avoided. So it means here, please, it's really important point. The relevant cost of making a component we are talking about. The relevant cost of making a component is the total of all avoidable costs. Now in avoidable cost, which cost usually will be the part of avoidable cost? So avoidable cost include variable manufacturing cost. Variable manufacturing cost means it may include the cost of material. It may include the cost of labor. It may include the cost of variable overhead. So this is what is called variable manufacturing cost. So please remember all variable cost uh, are relevant here. Okay, plus, plus fixed cost will also be relevant, but which portion of the fixed cost? This is a really important point. So for the fixed cost is what? The relevant fixed cost that would be eliminated if the component were purchased from an outside supplier. Like simply, so those fixed costs which you can avoid, which you can avoid if you will buy the product from outside. So it means those fixed costs are also arising due to the production of this product. So if you will add these two costs, variable cost, okay, plus fixed cost. For variable cost, what is the point? Whatever the cost you will incur to make the product or simply variable cost are always considered avoidable cost because if you will make the product, so you will incur these costs. If you will buy the product from outside, so you can avoid these costs. So variable costs are always avoidable cost. Now, so which fixed cost will be avoidable? Obviously the fixed cost that would be eliminated if the component were purchased from the outside. So if, if you will add these two costs, variable plus fix, so this is going to be your relevant cost. Relevant cost of what? Relevant cost of manufacturing the product. Relevant cost of making the product in-house. 
So this is really important statement. So I'm saying one more time. So all variable cost will be relevant plus all the fixed cost that would be eliminated if the component were purchased from the outside supplier. So if you will add these two, this is going to be your relevant cost and this relevant cost of making the product you will get here. Okay, but when you calculate the uh, cost of purchasing the products, obviously then it will be the only purchase price. So whatever you will pay to buy the product. So that is called cost under purchase option. And here this will give you cost under make option. And then you will compare these two costs and you will select the option with the lower cost. Now here we go. We have here example here. So let me just give you idea about the relevant cost here with the help of small examples. I'll do two, three examples first. Then I'll show you the exam standard questions, how question would be tested. For example, here we have Heinz company currently produces each component part of its top selling widget, which can, which can purchase, which can purchase component J. Okay, uh, but can purchase component J. So here it is important point, like actually you are manufacturing widgets. Okay, that can also be purchased from outside supplier and that can be purchased for $8 each. Heinz currently produces 35,000 units of component J. Like you are manufacturing how many units? 35,000 units. So in each year, the cost information for component J is as follow. What is the cost information? Cost of making actually. This is the cost of making. So cost of purchase is $8. Cost of purchase is $8. So cost of making, this is actually the information, uh, whatever is given below. So that is for the cost of making the product. So for example, if you want to make a widget, so we have to incur direct material cost of $4, direct labor cost of $2.5, variable overhead cost of $1. So guys, if you will add all these, so this is called your variable cost. And it is going to be how much? At 6, 7.5 if you will add. So 4 plus 2.5 plus 1. So it means variable cost are 7.5. But here now you are also provided with the fixed overhead. Means a fixed cost which is $2. So for the fixed cost we have here note. Okay, what is the note here? Fixed overhead includes $1.2 that would not be eliminated if component J were purchased from an outside supplier so it means if fixed overhead cost is two dollar out of two dollar the 1.2 dollar is the cost which cannot be eliminated it means the remaining if you will take two minus 1.2 the remaining 0.8 this is the cost which can be eliminated if you will buy the product from outside supply so uh, we need the portion only uh, we need the portion of fixed cost only that portion which can be eliminated. So here 0.8 is eliminated. So it means our relevant cost would be what? So if I will add here variable cost plus fixed cost which can be eliminated. Fixed cost is 0.8. If you will add these two value. So it is going to give you 8.3 dollar. So this 8.3 dollar is, is the cost to produce the product. Cost to produce the product. Okay. This is the cost to manufacture the product, 8.3. So what is the cost of purchase, which is given here, $8. So obviously, obviously, so which is cheaper option? Cheaper option is what? As per this information, cheap, cheaper option is you should buy the product from outside supplier. But if still, for example, if still you will manufacture because cost of purchase is how much? Cost of purchase is $8 and cost or to manufacture the product is cost to make the product is $8.3. So obviously if you will choose, if you will choose, if you will choose guys that you will manufacture the product, it means here you will have a loss, loss, loss how much? You will have a loss of $0.3 if you will choose to make it because cheaper option is cost of purchase. But if you will choose that you will make it, so obviously $0.3 you will incur extra cost. So this 0.3 dollar, if you will multiply, if you will multiply with the number of units, because you need number of units, how many units? 35,000 units. If you will multiply 0.3 with 35,000 units. So what will happen guys? What will happen? So you would have a loss of 10,000 and 500 dollar if you will multiply 0.3 with 35,000. But this will be the loss if you will manufacture the product. And this could be the saving 
if you will buy the product from outside. Right or wrong? So this is what is the scenario. So please remember this is the loss. If you will manufacture the product because you are incurring extra cost, 0.3 dollar times 35,000 units. So it means this much money you will lose if you will make it. But this much money you can save if you will purchase it. So it means cost to make the product or loss to make the product is also 10,500. And if you will if you will buy it from outside, so this cost can be saved. So this could be your saving. And please remember here, if Heinz buys component J from outside supplier, so whatever the loss you were incurring uh, by manufacturing the product, so that loss can be saved. So this is what they are saying. If Heinz buy component J from outside supplier, the operating income would increase by 10,500 because if you will buy it, because buying option is cheaper here, if you will buy it, so 10,500 you can save. So with this value, your operating income will increase. Please also remember guys, so what I said initially, I said the relevant cost to make the product. So I'm saying one more time, cost to make the product, how you will calculate relevant cost. You always need variable cost plus fixed cost, fixed cost. If Which fixed cost? The portion which can be eliminated if you will buy the product from outside. So if you will add these two, okay, this is your relevant cost. But please remember here, sometimes you may also have an opportunity cost also. Opportunity cost. Okay, opportunity cost explained in the last class. So we'll, we'll uh, discuss here with the calculation here. So it means you may have variable cost plus fixed cost. Sometimes you may have opportunity cost. So this will give you your relevant cost. So please, now I'm going to explain something about opportunity cost. I told you last time like uh, companies they always have a limited resource you know so when we divert the resource from uh, one source to other source or from one project to other project when you divert the resources okay from one project to other project or from one decision to other decision so you may lose the money at that time okay due to diversion of resources so that is called your opportunity cost okay so here we go opportunity cost i'm explaining here I, by the way, I explained, I have already explained in the last video we discussed with the help of examples. So here we, uh, what will happen here in some situation, a firm may decide to stop processing one product in order to free up capacity for another product. For example, if you are making the product or for example, if you want to make the product, maybe you do not have spare capacity. So you are already manufacturing product A by using that capacity, but now you want to manufacture the product B by using same production facility. Obviously, if you want to uh, produce the product B because you are operating at full capacity, you don't have any idle capacity, okay? So if you will produce product B, so you have to stop the production of product A and here you may lose some money. Why you are losing? Because you are going to stop the production of A and you are going to start the production of B. Due to the start of production of B, you are losing some money on the production of A. So that is called your opportunity cost. Okay. So that cost we also need to consider. So here we go. We have here <coughs> now one more example. Uh, this is the a second example. And then I'll show you exam standard question. Please, I'm just trying to explain a concept here. So here we go. We have a MG company. MG company currently produces toy tractors. Okay. An important part of toy tractor is the wheel. Wheel. So MG produces 40,000 wheels each year. This is the, you know, units which we are producing, 40,000. MG can purchase the wheels from outside supplier for $3. This is the cost to purchase, cost of purchase. Like if you will buy it, so you have to pay only $3. Okay, MG is operating at full capacity uh, and would eliminate all fixed overhead cost related to the wheel. It means if you will buy from outside, this is what they're saying. So, and would eliminate all fixed overhead cost related to the wheel production if it is purchased the wheels from outside supplier. Like if you are buying from outside, so all fixed cost can be eliminated. It means the whole amount of fixed cost is relevant now because uh, would eliminate all fixed overhead. If you will buy from outside, it means fixed cost is also relevant. Variable cost is avoidable plus fixed cost, which could be eliminated. If you will buy the product from outside, it means that fixed cost was also arising due to the manufacturing of this product. That is why it is relevant. 
so here we have a mg cost data cost data means a cost to make not cost to purchase cost to purchase is given here as a three dollar so mg cost data for each wheel uh, follows so what is it so we have a direct material uh, of 0.8 dollar we have a direct labor of one dollar we have variable overhead of 0.2 dollar and we have a fixed overhead here how much 0.75 dollar please remember here because fixed cost is also relevant so this is these all variable cost is also relevant so your total relevant cost would be how much 2.75 now here please remember you have to think about it now here if you do not have any other information just let's assume you have data up to here so which option is better obviously cost to purchase is three dollar okay and cost to buy is how much 2.75 dollar this is cost to cost to manufacture some but cost to purchase is three dollar so obviously which option is better the option uh, this option is better you should make the product in house and how much money you can save obviously if you will compare these two value so you can save guys 0.25 per wheel this you can save if you will manufacture and this you can lose if you will buy a product from outside okay so how in total how much money you can save if you will manufacture because manufacturing is the best option here so you will multiply this save saving per wheel multiply by how many wheels we need 40000 wheels so if you will multiply with 40000 wheels so this going this is going to give you 10000 dollar it means this 10000 10000 dollar can be saved can be saved if you will manufacture the product and this 10000 dollar you can lose if you will buy the product from outside understood so this is what they are trying to tell you so as i told you if let's let's read it now if we assume with no other information, MG should make the wheels in house because uh, cost to make uh, is less than cost of cost of purchase. So if MG bought from outside supplier, if you will buy it, obviously it means if you would buy, for example, because cost of making is two point seven five, and cost of purchase is three. If you are deciding to buy, yes, you are going to buy. So then you will lose this two point five per wheel. And if you will multiply with 40,000 wheels, so you will lose $10,000. This is what they're saying that if MG bought from outside supplier, operating income would decrease, decrease by $10,000 as I told you here. Now here guys, let's have a look. Uh, let's add some more information here. So now we'll go through the question this way. Please guys, because now I'm going to tell you pure more uh, more detail about this concept now what we are assuming here so here we go then we'll go through the uh, solution please remember here now we are assuming here now assume the following if mg bought the wheels from outside supplier if you will buy from outside supplier so you are losing ten thousand dollar here i told you because cost to manufacture is 2.75 but you are buying for three dollar if you would buy so you are paying 0.25 dollar extra and you have to buy forty thousand bills if you will buy you will lose money of ten thousand so this would be your loss so that's why i wrote it in negative uh, as a negative value so then they're telling you mg could begin so now here please go through from here again if mg bought the wheels from outside supplier i told you there would be a loss of ten thousand but there is other benefit also. What is the benefit? MG could begin producing toy trucks instead of tractors. So they can produce toy trucks in the space currently occupied by the wheel production line. They are saying if you would buy the product, if you would buy the wheel from outside, okay, you will lose 10,000. But other benefit is what? So that space would be free and you can use that space to manufacture another toy truck okay and annual operating income for toy truck line would be 24000 so they are saying if you will manufacture toy truck toy truck toy truck so your operating income would be 24000 annually the point is so now we are going to discuss here please here we go i'm going to write a solution here i hope so you would have uh, i hope so you have an idea about the question now so what we are going to do so first we are discussing if let's assume if we have decided to buy the wheel buy the wheel this is the option if we buy the product okay so what will happen here so please remember if you will buy so first calculate what is your loss per unit loss 
per unit. How you would get? So you will take three, which is the purchase price minus three dollar minus two point seven five. Two point seven five is your cost to manufacture the product. So if you will buy, obviously you are paying extra. How much you are paying extra? You are paying two point two five dollar. You are paying extra. This would be a loss per wheel. Okay. So now what you will do? How you will calculate total loss now? Total loss you will take per wheel loss is two point five. And how many wheels you have to buy? Forty thousand wheels. If you will multiply these two, so your total loss will be $10,000 if you will buy the product. If you will buy, please don't forget we are discussing if we buy the product. So total loss will be $10,000. But if you will buy the product, so there is another benefit. So there is another benefit. So we have one benefit also. And what is the benefit? The benefit is that the space which will be free okay if you are buying from outside obviously production space will be free that space can be utilized to manufacture the toy truck and toy truck will give you a operating profit of operating profit of 24,000 it is given in the question here it is given I'm not seeing anything from myself it is given here okay so operating profit of 24,000 so it means what will happen if you are buying the product so your loss is 10,000 but you are you on the other side you will have a gain of 24,000 which is kind of opportunity cost you can say or but here it is a benefit okay so opportunity is there to make this money 24,000 so if you will take your loss and compare with the benefit so you would have a net benefit of 14,000 so it means your operating income will increase by 14,000 how because you if you are buying the product please if you are buying the product because you will lose the money of 10,000 but you will gain the money as operating income from the production of toy truck 24,000 so your net effect your net income will increase by 14,000 now please remember if you are comparing with make option if make this was if buy make what will happen if you will make it so obviously at the cost to make is 0 0.75 so this would be your profit per unit saving per unit because cost is 2.75 cost to make and purchase price is 3 if you will make it so this 0.25 will become your saving 0.25 positive saving if you are making it because you will save this money and this 10,000 once you will multiply this 0.25 with 40,000 so this 10,000 it was loss if you buy but it will become a profit if you will it will become profit if you will make the product of 10,000 how you got 10,000? 0.25 multiplied by 40,000 wheels. And now, if you make the product, obviously you cannot manufacture the toy truck, right? And that from the toy truck, you are, uh, you are expecting to get operating profit of 24,000. Now it will become opportunity cost because you will lose it. If you will make the product in-house, you have to produce wheels. So you will lose the toy truck production and you will lose this operating profit. So this will become your opportunity cost now. How much? 40 uh, 24,000 negative now here you would have a net net loss because profit is 10,000 but opportunity cost is 24,000 so you would have a net loss net loss of how much 14,000 right or wrong and here obviously if you will make the product your net income will decrease by 14,000 but if you will buy the product so your net income will increase by 14,000 I hope so it is clear so this was the example guys now I'm going to show you some exam standard question. How questions would be tested in your exam. So we have your first question. It is really important question. And here we go. We have a fact pattern. Question is here. We have Regas company. Regas company manufactures plugs used in its manufacturing cycle at a cost of $30 per unit. This is what is the manufacturing cost, $30 per unit. That includes $8 of fixed cost because whole fixed cost is not relevant. Only the fixed cost which can be eliminated if you would buy the product from outside, that is relevant only. So here is the whole $8 of the fixed cost. So we have to read the question, what information is given. Then, Regus needs 30,000 of these plugs. This is the quantity annually. 
and Orlan company, this is another company, has offered to sell these units. I mean, so these plugs to Regus at thirty-three dollar per unit. This is actually cost of purchase. That if Regus, if they would buy from Orlan company, so they have to pay how much? Thirty-three dollar. This is the cost of purchase. Cost of purchase. I'm just writing it here. Cost of purchase. Or it is just highlighted cost of purchase. <laughs> if Regus decided to purchase the plugs, okay, if you have decided that you are going to buy the plugs from outside, so 60,000 of annual fixed overhead, 60,000 of annual fixed overhead applied will be eliminated. Great. So it means 60,000 is, it would be eliminated if you would buy it from outside. It means this 60,000 is a relevant cost because it means the 60,000 was uh, we were incurring due to the manufacturing of this product because it will be eliminated if you will buy from outside. And the company may be able uh, to rent the facility previously used. Obviously, if you would buy obviously from outside, so whatever the space will a space you will have a free space that you can rent it out for manufacturing and the plugs. Okay, so that could be rented out. So here we go. If the plugs are purchased, like if you are going to buy the plugs at thirty three dollar. Okay, uh, and the facility rented. So whatever the production space, which you would have free space that can be rented out. So they are saying if you will buy the plugs and the facility rented, Vegas company wishes to realize 100,000 in saving annually. So this is their target. They want to make a money of 100,000 saving annually. So the what is the question? The question is, this is their goal. They want 100,000 saving. So to achieve this goal, minimum annual rent on the facility must be. So they see, question is very technical. They are saying, tell me what is the minimum annual rent? And that amount, uh, what should be the amount of rent? That should leave a profit of uh, $100,000. Okay, after deduction, the loss if you would buy the product from outside. So now the point is how you would work. So please have a look. So because you have to calculate, Minimum annual rent you have to calculate. So see how I'm solving. I hope so you would, you have uh, uh, read the question carefully. So I'm going to solve it now. First of all, you have to calculate relevant cost. In relevant cost, you have to take first variable cost. Variable cost, how you will calculate. So you have to take total cost. Total cost of manufacturing. Total cost of manufacturing is given as $36 in the question. Minus if you will deduct their fixed cost from that. So fixed cost is $8 is given in the question. You can see here. 36 is given here and $8 is given here as a fixed cost. So if you will take total cost minus fixed cost, this is going to give you variable cost of how much? Variable cost of $28. Understood? So now you have to add here because whenever you calculate relevant cost, first you have to take variable cost, then you have to take fixed cost. Fixed cost that can be eliminated if you will buy the product from outside. So how do you calculate fixed cost? He told you the fixed cost which can be eliminated if you will buy the product from outside that is 60,000 here. Here it is given. So this can be eliminated. This portion of fixed cost can be eliminated if you will buy the product from outside. And how many units you are planning to buy? 30,000 units. So if I convert into per unit, so 60,000 fixed cost is there which can be eliminated. If I will divide over number of units which are 30,000 units, so this will give you per unit fixed cost, $2 per unit. Now, if I want to calculate relevant cost, so what I have to do for relevant cost, I have to take variable cost, which is $28, plus fixed cost, avoidable fixed cost, which is $2. So my relevant cost is going to be 28 plus two is going to be $30. Understood? Once the relevant cost is calculated, this is the relevant cost if you will make the product. Now this relevant cost you will compare with the with the cost of purchase. Like if you will buy the product from outside, if you will buy it, so he told you in the question that you have to pay how many dollars? Thirty-three dollar. You would compare these two values. Thirty-three dollar is given here. Look, if you will buy from outside, so you have to pay how much? Thirty-three dollar per unit. Okay, so here we go. Look at here. Please remember. So. If you will make, the cost is $30. Relevant cost is $30. If you purchase, you have to pay $33. And question is, if you purchase, 
if you purchase if regas company will buy the product if regas company will buy the product okay so how much he will lose please because cost to make is 30 dollar this is cost to make and cost to buy is cost to buy is 33 dollar this is cost to purchase and the loss will be what if you will buy it if you will select 33 so you would lose three dollar per unit and how many units are there guys so there are 30,000 units you are planning to buy. These 30,000 units are given in the question. Yeah, yeah 30,000. Okay, it means if you would buy, so you are paying $3 extra for each plug and there are 30,000 plugs. So it means you will lose a money of how much? $90,000. This is the loss. This is going to be loss if you will buy the product. Now I'm coming, written, I'm coming back to the question. Question was what? Question was, uh, if you will buy the product and facility is rented, so company wishes to realize 100,000 saving annually to achieve this goal, to achieve this saving, the minimum annual rent of the facility must be, what should be the rent? So here we go. Look at here. Now I'm just putting equation here. My equation is going to be, now equation is going to be like rental income because this is what they're asking, what should be the rental income? That should leave the saving of 100,000. From there, if I will deduct loss if purchased, because this is what he told you, if purchased and facility is rented, so the, and annual saving, you want 100,000. So what I have to do? I, I need to write a rental income minus law, loss if purchased equals, it should be equal my equal to my annual saving. And in, in the question he told you, the annual saving, you want how much? 100,000. And loss, if you will purchase, that is 90,000. It means what should be the value here? This is what is the question. Like what should be the rental income? So it means rental income should be 190,000. Because from 190, if you will deduct 90, it will give you 100,000. So how I just took 100, because I'm going reverse. From this value is given, this we calculated. So if I'll add, I'm going back now, 100,000 plus 90,000, it will be 190. Because when you go reverse, negative values will become plus. So 100,000 plus 90,000 is equal to 190. It means this should be your rental income. And if you will buy, this will be your loss. And then this will save 100,000 as an annual saving for you. So it means 190,000 should be the rental income. This was the question what they were asking. So here option B is the correct answer. Understood guys? So now we are going to deal next question. Here we have another question, please. I need concentration, guys. So they are saying, let's read the question here. Uh, please remember here, for this, the requirement here. Always try to first read the requirement, so then you will be more specific. Okay, they are saying, if company purchased XT9, XT9 is the name of the product. They are saying, if the company purchases XT9 from outside supplier, operating income would decrease by, like what would be the decrease or what would be the loss? If you would buy the product from outside, this is the question. So here we go. Let's have a look. Let's read the question together now. So what they are telling you a, com a company currently manufactures subcomponent XT9. A part in the company's main product ZL10. Actually XT9 you are using. So X question is about XTN. So management has found an outside supplier that could sell the company. 100,000 XT9 subcomponents next year for $45 each. So this 100,000 is the unit and 45 is the purchase price. Like if you would buy from outside, you have to pay 45. So one information we got. Second information we need to calculate what is the cost to make. That we need to calculate. And then we'll see how much is the loss if you will buy it. And then they're telling you the companies production of XT9 cost per unit are shown below. So here we have some data. We have a direct material cost, labor cost, variable manufacturing cost. Okay, so all these are relevant cost because all these are variable. Plus fixed cost. For fixed cost, you have to check which portion that can be eliminated if you will buy the product from outside. So for, so far, fixed cost is $6, which is given here. But we have to see which portion can be eliminated. Then if subcomponent is purchased from outside supplier, all the variable production cost would be eliminated. It means variable cost is relevant, we know. 
and 70% of the fixed production cost would be eliminated. It means $6 is not relevant. Only 70% of $6, okay, is relevant because 70% of $6 can be eliminated. So if you will just take $6 times 70%, it will give you 4.2. It means now what is your relevant cost? Your relevant cost will be 17, which is variable. 16, which is also variable, plus 4.5, which is also variable, plus from fixed cost, it will be 4.2. So if you will add all these costs, so it is going to be, it is going to be 41, 41, like if you will add these three, plus this. So it is going to be 41.7. And cost of purchase is how much? 45. And cost to make is how much? 47. And question is what? If company will purchase, okay, if company will purchase, so company is paying extra, company is paying 45, okay, company is paying extra, if you will compare these two value, how much company is paying extra, company is paying 3.3 per unit extra, and this 3.3 is going to be loss, if you are going to uh, buy the product, so you will lose 3.3 per unit, and how many units you are going to buy, so just multiply, you are going to buy 100,000 units, so it means your total loss would be how much? 300 and if you will multiply 30,000. This is going to be uh, $330,000 if you will purchase. This is going to be a loss, loss, loss if you will purchase. Now, now what they are telling you? Let's read the next question. They are also, because question is not yet completed. First I told you what you will lose. You will lose 330,000. So on the other side, what they are telling you? Then they are saying that, the management has found that the space used for XT9, whatever space you are using because you are going to buy from outside. So space will be free that you can maybe use somewhere else. So they're saying the management has found that space used for XT9 subcomponent could be used to produce a new product. So they're saying this space, which will be free now, if you will buy it from outside, so that space can be used to manufacture another product that would generate that the new product would generate $300,000 in the operating income. That's great. And then they're asking what if, if company purchases X39 from outside supplier, operating income would increase or decrease. Why? But so if you will buy from outside, as I told you, you will lose $300,000. But there is a one benefit also. What is the benefit? Benefit is if you will buy from outside, so you can manufacture another product and from there you can make a profit of $300,000. This is your profit and this is your loss. This is your profit if you will buy from outside. Profit in case of what? Because this profit you will get if you will use the space to manufacture another product. So what would be if you would buy? So this, this much money you will gain, this much money you will lose. Uh, so what would be your net benefit or net loss? Net loss will be 30,000. Okay, it means if you would buy the product from outside and you will use the free space to make another product, so your net loss would be 30,000. Okay, so which option should be correct? C option should be correct. Okay, guys. So we have here another question now. Okay, this is a little bit a tricky question, guys. It is a long way uh, we can follow to use it. So here we go. I'll explain. I'll try to explain both ways. But shortcut way is more easy. So here we go. For example, they're saying that a tailor, another question we are discussing now, a tailor estimates that 60,000 specialized, uh, special zippers, the tailor estimates that 60,000 special zippers will be used in the manufacture of men's jacket. Like maybe we need 60,000 zippers simply. During the next year, a zipper supplier has quoted a price of $6.5 per zipper. He told you that $6.5 per zipper uh, you have to pay to buy one zip, zipper, okay? The tailor would prefer to purchase 5,000 units per month. We need 60,000 zipper in year uh, in, in year time. But tailor is saying he, won't, he would prefer to buy 5,000 uh, zippers per month because 5,000 in each month times 12 months, it will give you 60,000 in a year. But the supplier is unable to guarantee this delivery schedule. Supplier is saying that no, no, maybe monthly I cannot supply you. So to ensure availability of these zippers, 
the tailor is considering the purchase of all 60,000 units at the beginning of the year. Your actually need is what? You should have 5,000 zippers every month. Okay. Over the period of 12 months, 5,000 you need every month. But supplier is saying that maybe it is not possible. So now what? Uh, tailor is deciding. Tailor is saying that, okay, no problem. He will buy 60,000 zippers all together at once and he will buy at the beginning of the year. Okay. Assuming the tailor can invest cash at 8%. They are saying, assume the tailor can invest cash because you need 5,000 only in the month of January, for example, in the first month. But you are buying 60,000, right? It means you are investing extra money in 55,000 zippers, right? And that money could have been invested somewhere else, right? So could have invested somewhere else. So then, uh, and there you can earn 8% profit. So what they are saying that, uh, assuming the tailor can invest cash at 8%, the tailor's opportunity cost of purchasing 60,000 units at the beginning of year is. So this is how you have to calculate. Now please guys, this question is tricky. So I'm just going to solve it first by using long way. Then I'll tell you shortcut way. Because if I tell you shortcut way, you would say how it is solved, it in fact, etc. So here we go. Let's make 12 month period. So here we have here January. I'm writing this shortcut. Jan. This is your first month. This is your second month. Third month. Fourth month. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Because 12 months data is there, right? What you need actually, uh, please remember, please remember, uh, monthly, 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 monthly. So, tailor need 5,000 zipper, zippers. And if each purchase price is 0.6, it means monthly, tailor need 3,000 to spend. 3,000 in the month of first month, 3,000 in the second month, 3,000 in the third month, 3,000 in each month actually he has to spend. So I'm just writing small, small guys. Just try to understand. Because if you, if you will buy as per your normal plan, so every month you need 5,000 zippers. Purchase price for each zipper is 0. 0.6. So it means you have to invest 3, 3, 3, 3,000. Okay. Now actually what happened actually? Actually what happened? Actually... You know, in the first month, in the first month, in the first month, because he has decided that he would buy all 60,000 zippers together. Point price is 0.6. So it means 36,000 was, uh, is the total amount of investment which he is going to invest now. Please remember what happening now. Okay, you have invested, actually this is what you have invested now, 36. But your monthly need is 3,000, 3,000, 3,000, 3,000, 3,000. Dollars, dollars. Okay. So what will happen here? So how much extra money you have invested now? I'm just calculating here. Extra, how much you have invested? In the first month, your need was $3,000 only, but you invested $36,000. So extra, you have invested $33,000. Right or wrong? In second month, again, for example, you need again for the $3,000. So 36 minus 6, these two. So it means, or you can go on this way. 33, you invested in the first month extra. In the second month, you will deduct the need of second month, which is 3,000. Uh, 33 minus 3, so it means 30,000 again, you invested extra. Again, 33 minus 3. Again, in the third month, you invested 27,000 extra. Again, 27 minus 3, here you invested 24,000 extra. Again, 24 minus 3, 21,000 you have invested extra. Here, 6, 21 minus 3, 18,000 you have invested extra. Because you invested 36,000 all in once. Your monthly need was 333. This is how we are working. So again, you will deduct this 3000. So you will get here you have invested in the seven month 15,000 extra. Then again, you will deduct okay 3000. Here you have invested 12,000 extra. Here you have invested uh, 9000 extra. Here you have invested 6000 extra. Here you have invested 3000 extra. And here it would be zero because three minus three, it would be zero. By the way, because zippers obviously will buy at the start of each month. Now, please remember what happened here. If you will look at here, if you will add, because you need to get average, na? logically we cannot add all these values. We need to get average, like on average, how much extra amount we have invested. So what we will do, we will add all these values. We will add all these values, which values? 33, this is the extra investment, right? At, in the first, at the start of first month, you invested this much extra. At that the start of second month, your extra investment is 30,000, 27,000 and so on. So this is the long way I'm telling you, shortcut way I will tell you later. 
So first what you will do if you will add how much total extra investment because you need to get average. This is the total investment just I'm adding. If you will add all these values, 33 plus 30 plus 27 plus 24 plus 21, if you will add all these values, it is going to be 198,000. Okay, you have to just divide with the how many number of values. So these are 12 values because 12 months are there. So 12 values, if you will count this from here to here, 12 values. So you will divide with the 12. So average investment is going to be 16,500. So this is your total extra. Total extra was 198. If you will divide with the 12, so this is going to give you average. Average extra investment. On average, on average, extra investment, 16,500. And what was the question? Question is, question is assuming the tailor can invest cash at 8%. The tailor's opportunity cost of purchasing 60,000 units at the beginning of the year is, how you will calculate? You will take, this is the extra, average extra investment, 16,500. Multiply by 8% because this money you have invested extra, right? Uh, on average, on average, I'm saying you have invested extra. So if you will multiply with the 8%, so you would have earned the profit of if you will just multiply 16,000 times 8%. So it is going to give you 1320. So because you this money you lost now, because you are not investing uh, in, uh, at, in 8% option, you are investing in zippers. So this is actually where you will lose. Now shortcut way. This is the long way. Now I'm telling you shortcut. Actually, this is the answer, okay? 13,200. Shortcut way is what? Just stay in the first month. First month is your January month. In January, you bought how many zippers? Actually, 60,000. You paid 0.6 for each. You paid $36,000. But your need, this is what you have invested. But your need was what? Your need was only 5,000 zippers in the first month only with 0.6 dollar price. So, 5,000, uh, 3,000. 3,000 was your need. This was your need. Invested, you have invested 36, but need was 3000. If you will deduct, so it means extra you have invested 33,000 in the month of January. This 33,000 I will divide with the two here. Just you know, as we take average opening plus closing divided by two. So, in that scenario, simply we are taking here what simply just we will divide with the two. This will give you average value. Average, average, don't divide with the 12 here, divide with the two only. So, you will get here 16,500 average. And that could have been invested at 8%. Okay, so and you could have earned profit of how much? 13, 1, 3, 2, 0. So this is the shortcut way. Shortcut way is what? Focus on the first month. See what the actual value you have invested. See what was the need. Deduct. Okay, the get the extra investment. This is 33,000 is extra investment. Divide with the 2. You will get the average. Multiply with the 8%. You will get the opportunity cost. Understood? This is the shortcut way. Now let, let me do one more question with you guys. So we have here one more question. Uh, S Corporation produces premium office chairs due to recent change in the market share. S must decide whether to make or buy an order of 1000 chairs. This is the quantity of chairs, 1000 chairs. The material cost of a chair is $20. Material cost, material cost of producing chair, $20 per pound. And cost of direct labor is $40 per hour. Per hour is given here. And manufacturing overhead is 100% variable. You're saying this is variable. Variable cost always relevant. Is allocated on a rate of $10 per chair. This is per chair is given. Overhead which are variable, it is $10 per chair. Fixed cost for the year are $5 per chair. This is fixed cost. Of 20% are avoidable. This was manufacturing overhead variable. $10 per chair. And then they told you fixed cost. Fixed overhead is $5 per chair. 20% are avoidable. Each chair requires 2 pound of materials. 2 pound. For each pound rate is $20 given here. And 1 hour of labor. And labor hours rate is given here. $40 per hour. Okay. Assume that S has excess capacity. So there would be no opportunity cost. The total cost per chair relevant to the make or by decision is relevant cost. You have to calculate relevant cost. You always calculate if you make the product. Because if you purchase the product, the so purchase price is given. You don't need to work. So if you make the product. If make. So you need relevant cost what? Here given material cost. Labor cost is given. Variable 
overhead is given, fixed overhead is given. For material, I told you, you need two pound and each pound cost is for $20. Look at it. Here he told you two pound pounds of material is required and it is told you $20 per pound is the price. So material cost is going to be 40. For labor, he told you one hour is required, one hour of labor is required. Multiply by each hour rate is $40. Here we go. Here is given one hour, one labor hours, and here is given labor rate $40. So if you will multiply, it means $40 is the labor cost. Then you have to calculate variable overhead. Variable overhead, he told you 10 per chair. Per chair is given. Okay. So per chair, we are calculating cost per chair also. So this variable cost is 10 per chair. Then he told you for the fixed cost. He told you fixed cost is $5 per chair. Fixed cost is $5 per chair of which 20% are avoidable. Only avoidable cost we have to take. Avoidable. So we'll take for the fixed cost what? We'll take $5 per chair into 20% is avoidable. Relevant only. So it will give you one. If you will add all these 40 plus 40, 90 plus, uh, 40 plus 40, 80 plus 10, 90 plus 1, 91. So this is the cost to make the product 91. Option B is correct option. I hope so it is clear.